In this video, we're gonna solve eight different Excel questions that came up in a job interview. We can start here with the first spreadsheet, but we have four different spreadsheets to solve all the questions that each one of the spreadsheets has. Let's start with the first one where we have questions that goes from the first one up to the third one. And let's see here what we have in the header, some important instructions. The below report is about the data production of machine A1 and A2. And here, so in this report, we have uh, some four different columns where we have the date, the time in minutes, the name of the machine, A1 or A2, and also here, they basically, I think it's the status of the product. Everything here is okay. Let's move on now to the questions itself, and uh, let's start with the first one, where do we have what is the total time spent by all machines? Use a function. Okay, so how can we do the total time spent by all machines? We need to basically add it up all the values that make up my time in minutes. So add up all these values right here. Okay, to do it, we can either use a formula or a function, but let's stick with the function itself because this is what the, the question is asking us to do, using a function. But if you want to use a formula, you can do like, like this, for example, equals sign, and then select the first cell, add to the plus sign, plus sign, add to the second one, add to the another one, and so on, so on. You can select all the cells that we have in all the different rows, but it's gonna take you a long time to complete this task. So maybe it's because of that, the function, the, the first question is asking you to use a function instead of using a formula itself. And as a function, we can use equal sign sum function to add up all the values. Sum function, double click here, one, two. Now the first condition that the, the sum function is asking me is to select basically the range that I want to add up the values that are is in this range. So to do it, I can basically either select a specific range like this, or I can also click here in the entire column B, just click over the letter B, and that's it, we're done. So I just select here the entire column B. I can close parentheses and press enter, and here we got the correct result. 1,500 uh, minutes expend for all machines, okay? The second question, we have something similar, but it's a little, it's, it's a bit different here. What is the total time in minutes expend by machine one, A1? Use a function. Now, instead of adding up all the values, we need to add up all the values that correspond that match with the machine A1. So if I have a value that corresponds to the machine A2, I'm not allowed to add up this value to the sum, to the total uh, that, I, that I, I'm adding up here. So let's take a look here again in the report. So let's say I want to add up all the values that correspond that match with the machine A1. So these two values right here, okay, I can add it up, but uh, then the, the third and the fourth value, for example, I cannot add up these values because this corresponds to machine A2. How can I do it, the sum? The sum with a criteria to add up values with a condition. To do it, I can use the sum if function. Sum if the condition is met, for example, or are met. Equal sign, sum if function. I can double click here, one, two. The first thing that the sum if function is asking me is about the range. And for this range right here, we can understand the range that I'm gonna use as the criteria, to check the criteria. So, as I want to look for the machine A1, for example, I need to select the range where I have the names of the machines. So, this range is the column C. And again, I can either select a specific range like this, or I can click in the entire column C to select everything that I have in the column C. I'm gonna do the second option, select the entire column C. And then I'm gonna press here, comma. Now the sum if function is asking me the criteria. As my criteria, I want to use the machine A1. So it's important here to type in specifically exactly the same name that I want you to look for. And this name is machine A1. So I'm gonna open quotations mark, it's important to do it. Machine A1, close quotations mark, okay? So quote, unquote, and then comma. Now the last condition that the sum if function is asking me is about the sum range. So after the sum if function, look for the machine A1 in the column C range. I want to add up all the values that is gonna match with the criteria 
that is in the column B, for example. So after the submit function C, all the matches, it's going to add up the corresponding value in the column B. Close parentheses and then enter. Here we got the result. I can do the same thing here basically for the question number three that is asking us to do something similar. What is the total time in minutes expanded by machine H2? Use a function. Okay, so equals time sum if function. And as you guys can see here, we have sum if function and also the sum ifs function with this s in the suffix, for example. What is the difference between these two functions? Because it's looking almost the same, huh? Uh, it's, yes, maybe it's almost the same. Long story short, the sum if function you can use if you only have one criteria, one condition, okay? But if you have just more than one criteria, let's say you have two, three, four, ten different conditions, ten different criteria, you can stick with the sum ifs function. So let's say here, the only criteria that we have, the only condition is the machine HU. The machine, the type, the name of the machine is a condition, but we only have one condition, that is the machine. So I can stick with the sum if function. But let's say I have two different conditions or three different conditions, I can use the sum is function. What, else, uh, what would be other types of conditions that I can use here? For example, if you want to add up all the values that match with the machine A2, it's going to be one criteria. But despite of that, you also want to add up all the values that match with the machine A2, and that is from the January month, for example. So now you have two different conditions, two different criteria, the month and the type of the machine, for example. You can use the sum ifs function to help you with this request. Let's uh, select here the first option, sum if, won't you? Uh, as we just learned before, the range is going to be the range where I have the criteria or the entire column C in this scenario right here, comma. Now my criteria is going to be open quotations, machine A2, close quotations mark, comma. And my sum range is going to be the column where I need to sum and add it up the values that I have, okay? Close parentheses and then enter, and we're done. So here I just complete these three different questions, and that's it. Now we can move on and go to the second spreadsheet to see what we have here and to solve these questions. And as you guys can see, you have some similarities between the first sheet and the second one, but here we have different questions. The fourth one, the, fourth one, the fifth one, and the sixth one. Let's read here the headers. The below report is about the production of machine A1 and A2. Okay, so basically we have here the same data set as before, but the questions are a little bit different here. Which machine has the lowest average production time? Machine A1 or A2? I don't know yet. Maybe we can move on and I skip for a while the, the question four, and then we can answer the five and the six one, and then come back to the fourth one. Okay, I think it's a good idea. Five, what is the average production time of the machine A1? Use a function. Okay, to, to solve this question here, we can use a function called average. So this is a simple question here, a simple function in Excel, equal sign average function, that function right here, one, two. But the problem with the average function is this average function right here that we are using now is gonna take the average of all the values that we're gonna select in the range. But I can't do the average to all the values that are going to select in the range because I need to be more specific. For example, I need to take the average only to the machine A1, for example. So I cannot use here the average to do the average of all the values. Instead of do it, uh, the average function is kind of similar to the sum function. We also have the average if, and here we can use a criteria in the average function. Let me double click here in the if function, one, two, to select. And the first condition that the average if function is asking me is about the range. What is the range that I'm going to use to check the criteria, for example? As I need to look for the name, the type of the machine, I need to select here as the range, the column C, for example, like this. And then, comma. Now to the second condition here is the criteria itself. So in this question number five, I need to look up for the machine A1. So open quotations mark machine a1 close quotations comma and now i need to input here the third the 30 criteria that is going to be the average range 
So after the average if function look up for the criteria in the column C, it needs to take the average that is in the column B to all the values that is going to match with uh, the result that we have in the column C. Let's go close parentheses here and press enter. Here we got the average of production time of the machine A1. Let's move on now to this, the question number six, where we have what is the average production time of the machine A2? Use a function. In the same way that we did before to the question above, we can use the sum, the average function, average if function, be more specific. Average if function, double click here. The range that I'm going to use to look up for the criteria is going to be the column C. And then, comma, my criteria is going to be code machine A2, unquote, comma, and the average range that I'm going to use is going to be the column B. And we're done. Close parentheses and enter. Now we can come back to the question number four and answer this question. Which machine has the lowest average production time? And as you guys can see here, what of each one of these machines, A1 or A2, have the, has the, the lowest value, for example? We can see that the machine A2 has the lowest value. So we need to assign here the machine A2. Let me just click here in this, this list and select here the machine A2. And we're done. So six questions are done. Let's move on now to the, the third spreadsheet, where we have something very different here. Let's take a look in the instructions. Use a function to fill in the column cost of the sales list using as reference the information of the cost list. Okay, so we need to fill in the sales list, uh, the column cost to be more specific, using the information that we have here in the cost list. So let's take a look here. For example, cast iron. We need to fill it in here, input the cost of this material, but the cost of this material we have here in this first data set that is here basically. So cast iron, for example. Okay, so I need to fill it in, take this value right here and put all the way here. Okay, to do it, of course. Uh, okay, the, the, this problem right here is asking us to use a function. Of course, we can do it manually. I can take a look here in this list and then I can fill it in a couple of materials here, and then I can come back here and see a couple of more materials and fill it in here and so on and so on. I can do it for all the rows that we have, but come on, it's going to take me a long time to do to complete this task. So to use a function, of course, that is a smarter way to do it. And we can use here the equal sign, the VLOOKUP function to help us, or we can either use the XLOOKUP function or even the index match function, maybe. But in order to make it simple, Let's use here the VLOOKUP function. Double click here in the VLOOKUP function, will not you? The VLOOKUP function can help us to bring as result the values that is going to correspond to the material that we are looking for. As the first criteria, the VLOOKUP function is asking us is the lookup value. The lookup value here is going to be the cast iron. I can either open quotations and type it in manually the material that I am looking for, but think about it. If we do it manually, type it in the name of the material, when I click in the down right corner of the cell, click, hold, and drag down to make sure all the rows contain the same function, see that uh, we have a problem because the name is not going to change. So we're going to need to type it in again and, and again and again and again. So maybe it's a good idea to make it dynamic. Instead of manually typing in the lookup value that we are going to use here, we can select the cell itself. So I can select this cell right here to the left, okay, cast arrow. And then when we click in the down right corner of the cell, click hold and drag down, we know that uh, the range is going to be following along with the drop down. So it's going to be dynamically and uh, it's going to change the material dynamically. Come on. Now we can move on here to the second condition that is the table array. As the table array here, I need to select the list where I want to look up for. And I also need to select the column that I want to bring it back as result. So I cannot, for example, select here as the first column, the date, because my first column, the criteria that I want you looking for is in the column B. So I need to start with the column B, okay? And then I can select the entire column B and select all the way to the right. But I'm going to stick with the, just these two columns right here because it's where I have the information. The first column is the where I have the material that I'm looking for. And the second column here in this range that I select is the cost or the value that I want to bring back as a result if the criteria match, okay? So, 
Okay, I already select here the, the table array, but here it's important to do something, to press the F4 key to lock the reference. And as you guys can see, with when I press the F4 key, a uh, dollar sign is input just before the letter and before the number, and that's it. This is what you need, okay? So to lock the reference, because when you click in the down right corner of the cell and drag down, this range right here is gonna stay in the same position. It's not gonna change. Now let me press here, comma. Now I need to input the column index number that I want to bring it back as result. So after I look for and find the material that I'm looking for, I want to bring it back as result the column number two, the cost. The cost is my column number two. So I'm gonna input here the number two, comma, and I want to use here exact match or I want to bring it back as result the exact value that I need. So let me double click here, one, two, close parentheses and enter and we're done. So here we have the cost of the first item and uh, the first material and we can also do a manually check here to see if it's correct. So 262.43, cast iron 262.43, okay, yeah, it's correct. Now I can double click here in the down right corner of the cell, one, two, to make sure all the rows now contain the same function and we're done with this question number seven. Let's move on now to the last question and to the last spreadsheet. Use a function to fill in the status column with OK or not OK. OK if the production time in minutes is below 4.30 or else not OK. OK, so if the production time here is below 4.3, it's OK. If not, else it's not OK. To do this automation, of course, we need to use a function because the question is asking us. But if you need to do it manually, of course, you can do it. So, for example, 1.05 is OK. 9.41 is not OK, for example. You can do it manually, like I'm doing here. But it's going to take you too long to complete all these rows because, as I can see here, OK, 45 in different rows. Maybe you're going to take uh, maybe five minutes to complete this task. But imagine if you have 1,000, 10,000 different rows. It's going to take you longer. Huh? So it's a good idea to use here a function that can help us to automate tasks. And this function is called equal sign if function. The if function can help us with this automation. Let me double click here in the if function, one, two, to select. Uh, the first thing that uh, the if function is asking us to do here is to input the logical test. And my logical test here is gonna be what uh, basically what the question is asking us to do. So, okay, if the production time is below 4.3, if not, it's not okay. So I need to basically write all of this information that I have within the if function. But how can we do it? To do it, uh, we can use a couple of different logical operators, but here we're gonna use one in specific, that is the less than or below. This is this symbol that we're gonna use here, below. To use, let's say, greater than, you can use this symbol right here, the arrow to the right. And if you want to compare, if two things are equal to each other, you can use basically the equal sign. Let's stick here with what we need to do to complete this question. If this value that I have here is less than, look at the symbol that I, I'm using here, less than 4.30, Comma, if it's true, so if the production time is uh, less than 4.3, I'm gonna need a result as result, okay. And to type in okay, you need to code, uncode, and type in okay. Else, open quotations, not okay, close quotations, close parentheses. So basically, we just transcribe this text right here into uh, the if function. Let me press here, okay? Just double click here in the function, one, two, and uh, now we're done. So eight different questions uh, came up in a job interview. I hope this video can help you out. And uh, if you have any questions or any suggestions to the next videos, let me know, comment down below. And I see you tomorrow as everybody has a new video. I see you there.